Hey, welcome to Game of the Year 2014 here on Sir Android TV. I am your World Heavyweight Champion of the World, and here are my top 10 games of 2014. The first nine are in alphabetical order, but I will save my number one for last. First, Ostabreed. No, not ass to breed. It's a bullet hell shooter, it's a side scrolling shooter, it's a vertical scrolling shooter, it's a behind the back shooter, it's a beat em up. It's a bunch of different retro gaming genres done in very retro ways, but with the presentation and the feel of a modern game. Now it's not as hard as what bullet hell shooter enthusiasts would want, but the game is still incredibly fun and the last few boss fights are still really damn hard and are very rewarding to beat. The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. I was a big fan of the original game, but it had two major flaws that kept me from playing it as much as I wanted to. It didn't have native controller support, and it wasn't on my PlayStation Vita. But luckily, with this remake, I get both on the go. Get it? When I go? Because I play when I take a shit. Infamous Second Son. I rented this game and didn't have the foresight to capture footage, so I'll keep it short. The powers you get in this game make getting around the world really, really damn fun. One Finger Death Punch. This game is pretty much the dive kick of beat em ups. It's the beat em up genre simplified down to two buttons the left click and the right click. It has really engaging music, surprisingly deep combat, and an art style that takes me back to some of the amazing stick figure flash animations from 2005 without feeling forcibly outdated. Pure Pool. Now, I know this game seems a bit boring compared to the rest of my list, but it's actually very impressive. It's the most realistic billiards video game I've ever played, and they really, really nailed that realism in almost every way. There's no arcadey bird's eye view, so you have to actually get up and move around the table to take your shots from a first person perspective. And the physics feel so amazingly real that learning to play without the guidelines is actually a great accomplishment. Senran Kagura Shinobi Versus, a game that by all means I should have absolutely hated. The gameplay feels like Dynasty Warriors, the story is just mostly walls of text, and I hate when video games, TV shows, movies, and whatnot have pointless sexual fan service that breaks the logic of the fiction. But what I love is silly, over-the-top craziness with a purpose, and that's what this game does with its sexual fan service. It doesn't break the logic, the sexual fan service is the logic, and instead of just taking the straightforward creepy approach, it goes with the silly, over-the-top humor that at many times is genuinely really damn funny. Strider, a great retro revival of the old Strider series, but what really pulled me in is that playing it reminded me of the first time I played through Mega Man X, feeling a huge amount of, of quickness and freedom in the movement, and the rush of getting new abilities and then getting to the next boss room to see which of your abilities affects that boss in different ways. <laughs> Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo 3DS and Wii U, which I'll count as one game on this list. I always liked the Smash Bros. series, but I was never really a proper fan, mainly because this is the first time I've actually had the systems that Smash Bros. games came out on at the time they actually came out. So this is actually my first time owning a Smash Bros. game, and therefore the first time I'm actually putting forth the effort to properly learn how to play. And I'm having a lot of fun maining as uh, Mega Man, even if he isn't all that good, because, you know what? He's fun for me to play as. Theater Rhythm Final Fantasy Curtain Call I'm a pretty big fan of the Final Fantasy series, which has a lot of great music, and I missed that on the first Theater Rhythm, so of course this game was pretty much a no-brainer for me. And now, for my Sir Android TV number one game of the year of the year of the year world premiere. It's Bayonetta 2. <laughs> I am an ass man, but the main reason I love Bayonetta 2 is because it uses a lot of the Osiris Wrath level of insanity and it combines it with great combat. 
It's a way more colorful game than Bayonetta 1, with a lot of very important gameplay tweaks that make the combat more flexible for the more casual players, while also giving more options to the more technical players. And there you have it, my top 10 games of the year 2014, and I just want to give a quick shout out to a few other games, uh, Alcaba Strip on PS4 and Harful Boyfriend on PC, both of which I didn't get to play enough of before making my list, uh, Crimson Clover, World Ignition, uh, Hatsune Miku on the PlayStation Vita, and Digimon All-Star Rumble, which, you know, purely for just being a Digimon game that got localized and released in 2014. But anyways, I have been your World Heavyweight Champion of the world, and I will see you next time. Next year?